Uh, we're down here at uh, Vintage Blue Secret Lair. Where they're getting ready to do the practice, but they've so kindly taken some time out to chat with us. Uh, I've known you guys for about 18 months now. Whoa. Uh, I know. It sounds crazy. Uh, but we've never actually talked about any of your music. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> we, we, we've never we, spoken. <laughs> no, we generally talk about other people's music or the San Francisco 49ers. Also true. So, you guys started out as a cover band, right? Not Vintage Blue, but this this group of us were, were a cover band along years ago. <laughs> yeah. and what, what, what drove your desire to just start doing originals? I think we just kind of made a conscious choice after a while. We've been doing cover shows at like Wise Fool's Pub and Sylvie's and places like that for, what, two years? Oh, someone's here. Want to grab that little guy? Um, and we kind of, uh, you know, it was fun playing the covers. The cover scene was all right, but we actually had a lot more, I guess, um, interest in just doing our own stuff and being able to play venues that specifically cater to original tunes. You know, being able to play places like House of Blues or Double Door or Metro, you know, that was what was really appealing to us. So I think that's kind of where it all started. And I remember even when I came, when I was first introduced to Will and Ryan, and there were some other people around at the time, they already, Ryan had already written some original songs that I was able to listen to. I remember I heard Great Divide early on, which is on the record. Hey, hey Matt. Matt! It's Matt Zimmerman, our sax player. Show, so we're having an interview right now. But yeah, yeah. So it's very official. Take a seat anywhere. So, so, so I heard some recordings, uh, like simple recordings that Ryan had done of some of these original songs, some that are actually on that first record, and... Um, that's how I originally bought into being in the band, was I, I was like, someday those, we're going to do those. And we started playing some of them live right away. And, yeah, everything else kind of is what Ryan said. And that so kind of found a place after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you guys recorded Strike the Mics and put it out last year. Uh, and in the short time that we've known each other, you guys have played Lincoln Hall. I mean, some of the big venues in Chicago uh, in a short time. Do you guys think that the drive, like, wanting to be able to do your own thing has helped you, like, just push through and be, like, doing your own PR, getting out there and, like, driving your own shows, getting people to come out? Yeah, I think it differentiates you, definitely. I mean, you know, you can, there are definitely a lot of great cover bands in the city, so, um, but, you know, that's a whole different animal. We've kind of really distanced ourselves. We do play covers, obviously, of different shows, and we still will every once in a while play a cover show, but uh, in general I think we've really just kind of, you know, really I'm going to hand it to Ben, because mostly Ben is really all the social media stuff, all of the, um, you know, pushing to your point, getting getting people to come to shows, things like that. It's um, it's a whole different kind of ball game when you're doing original music, obviously. You know, you're, it's, you really are driving everything. So. I, I think to the same point, when we because we had the cover band like foundation thing, it's you know people will come out to a bar if there's a cover band and you could be an atrocious cover band and people will still sing along and dance along and so we had a lot of people coming to the cover band shows so when we were like hey we're gonna go we're gonna do this new thing now because at the time we tried to do both under the old band name and people would come out and you, you would give them a mix of originals and covers and we had that base of people that were friend that were, <laughs> more people. There's a lot of members in the band, okay? <laughs> There's 19 more people coming out. <laughs> so, you know, like, you already had, like, a good foundation to work with people that knew that they liked us as a cover band or knew that they liked us as human beings outside of the music world, and they would come see the original. Human thing. beings. So, so that homo erecti out of the, you know, like, they would come see us either way. Shush. What was the response like at first to, to you guys doing originals? Were people disappointed that they weren't just getting a full set of covers? Or were they into it? Blank stares. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth so open. We, we had play, in, integrated some of the originals into the cover set. Yeah, and it wasn't a very difficult transition, really, because yeah. we'd already been kind of doing it already. Um, so. Caesar! Oh, Our bass player's here. Oh, He's all dressed up, too. <laughs> um... And and I think the one thing you get used to is is instead of going to a bar and seeing what, what we what was previously called Tanglewood for three hours, it was now Vintage Blue or whatever whatever in the timeline wherever you are for forty five minutes or an hour, and you had to see other bands and be ex exposed to other music. So only within the last year or so have we really started being introduced to new Chicago bands, or or you know we also the Sister Hazel 
connection, all that, you know, like really starting to pay attention to who we play with, where we play with them, what they're doing. Like those are, takes a lot of time. I mean, that's what you do. Yeah. I mean, you're following tons of, of bands and musicians. And so when we played Lincoln Hall, that's why I wrote to you. You, man, you, you, uh, and you guided us absolutely right. You're dreamy, Josh. Yeah. Dreamy. <laughs> it's true. You are. Yeah. So, uh, it's definitely important who you play with and, and knowing a little bit of your scene, um, as a cover band, uh, even the cover bands, we, some big name cover bands locally that we've played with, they don't care who they're playing with because they're just, they just come, set up, do their thing, and, and go. Um, not so much into who, you know, what the other bands are. They're one track machines. They're machines. Yeah. Sure. But speaking of bands that you guys are playing with, uh, next week, mm. June 1st, uh, you guys are playing at House of Blues with Love Hammers. Uh, everything that I know about Love Hammers has come from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. Uh, they joined you uh, when you guys played at Lincoln Hall. Marty uh, Casey. Marty did, yeah. yeah, the lead singer joined us. But Love Hammers are amazing. <clears throat> I mean, they've been around. They've been on the Chicago, you know, huge down the Chicago music scene for a long time, actually. Yeah. How did you guys um, get hooked up with them? I don't remember. I, mean, I was a fan of Love Hammers from <laughs> even back in the college days, and I was I've been, had been listening to them for a long time, and then. Marty Casey had you know a bunch of success on uh, Rockstar in Excess, which was a TV show. I think it was on CBS. He's one of the finalists. He made it all the way into the show, um, and uh, he had you know all the songs. He actually wrote a song called Trees, which was hugely popular in the Chicagoland area. And then he got to play with a bunch of amazing people: Dave Navarro, a bunch of you know the list of tons of people he's worked with and written music with. He played with um, LA on toured with LA Guns, or yeah. I was in LA Guns for a while. Yeah, well, yeah, so. and LA Guns toured with them as well, obviously. And then you know they've been writing songs. He's an amazing songwriter, um, and all the guys are incredibly talented guys, and uh, just a, like a, just a total rock fest, like a very straight up rock and roll badass. Yeah. And I think we got connected with Love Hammers the same way we've kind of been connected with a lot of things through Paul Farvar, a shoeshine boy here in Chicago, and. He, Marty went to U of I, Paul went to U of I, I Ryan went, to U, went I. to U of I, so there's a, that connection as well. Uh, where you go to college matters, kids. Uh, so, <laughs> I didn't finish college. <laughs> so, so, Way to rub it in, Ben. I know, Good sorry. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's, I mean, I think Marty came to a couple shows, maybe Dino, the bass player, their business guy. And uh, we played with them last year, and I think we were the second out of three or four bands in this year. They asked us to be direct support, which is obviously great for us, and we're pretty excited. Yeah, yeah. very excited. Though. And that's kicking off kind of a, a nice summer for you guys. You guys are doing uh, the St. Patrick's um, Old St. Pat's old block party. Yeah, they're doing. They have a new music person this year, but Old St. Pat's is the June 28th, June 29th. It is like, it's a private festival, so they kind of have an unlimited funding source and don't have to stick to a lot of the same rules that star events and special events have to for these normal um, street fests. So they tend to bring in bigger artists this year. We're playing uh, with uh, Edward Sharp and the Mag Magnetic Zeros and Blue Traveler, Blue Traveler yeah. which will be awesome. We get to hang out with them and meet them before, which is really kind of the coolest part. Last year was Lifehouse, which... Lifehouse yeah. is some people's Nickelback, which is fine. Well, you, you can have it out there. Well, it was cool to see them have success with their new record this year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. After a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, you guys are playing with Lifehouse. They're on the, the decline, you know. But mm -hmm. then they had that uh, that one track that did really well, so it was good to see that. Yeah, they're yeah. such nice guys. Yeah. 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 So it's an incredible opportunity we were really thankful for. Yeah, who's, yeah. The big, uh, who's the big networker when you guys are doing shows with bands like that? Oh, it's Ben here. Yeah. Yeah. No, you mean like when we're band. talking to them? Probably not me. Setting them up, yes. But when we're there, I mean, you, you guys are the ones that, yeah, better networkers for sure. Ryan's the most friendly by far, and Will, is, the Will comes in with That's the, true. Will has a, this incisive business. Yeah, Will is amazing. Will's got a great business. He's got account. the handshake, man. Yeah, he's got the handshake down. The proper, the proper the handshake. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, what it is all this time. I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of, it's a it's a good team. It's a good team. You know, like, I, I feel like a lot of times I set things up for us, and these guys have come through every single time. So, whether it's music or... You knock them down. Yeah, I didn't want to say that because it, it was cliche, <laughs> but I'm glad you did. So, but, th but that's the idea. You should have a, a team of people that everybody's good at certain things. We haven't figured out what that is for Brent yet. Yeah, I'm still working on We should have a team that, that, works that works that way. <laughs> so, it's, it's, it's definitely worked very well for us. Yeah, now you guys are starting work on your second 
full length. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're here practicing tonight. I know you guys have already had a couple ideas that you've kind of tweeted about and Facebooked about. Uh, what kind of time frame are you guys looking at for the next record? Well, we're scheduled to be recording sometime in August, but I mean, I think really I mean, we're more excited about these songs than, than anything we've, we've worked on, so I'm really pumped about what's going to come out of the, the sessions, and um, we'll probably have you know several days, probably at Rack's Tracks with our producer, Jamie Candeloro, a great guy, um, coming into town. He'll probably stay here, and then we just literally just, just crank through it and get... Now, the good news is we've been playing some of these songs live already, so we already have a pretty good idea pretty good feel for the you know the structure of what they're going to be but obviously you know you want to put on those uh, the finishing touches are really kind of what differentiate the song from being a good song to a great song or from a great song to a legendary song <laughs> but i think you also and i think you learn every time you make a record you should at least in, in my mind i think we've all agreed you, you not only grow musically but you also grow in the experience of of a Really? Go ahead, of, a, of, a record, of a record an cycle. Person. Like, like, that one's for me, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I ordered pizza. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, there's like a, a, the record cycle. Like, how do you promote? How do you... Uh, music videos. You know, like, there's a lot of things we'd like to do that we didn't do with the last record. I mean, I made music videos for a couple songs, okay? I'm not, I'm not a videographer. We talked about it's iMovie and the most awful editing software in the history of the world. But people liked them, they were fun, and it's it's always good to have a way for people to find the music in a visual way as well. So there's a lot of things, um, you know, some connections we've made in the last year from these shows, people that may be able to help us out in ways that would take us way beyond what we did with the last record. So um, we're hopeful, but you have to yep. make the music. The music's got to be good too. So, But we're, like Ryan said, we're totally excited about that, and Jamie's... Yep. I mean, we've been working on this record since we put out the last one. Yeah. But it's a matter of, you know, really loving the songs and knowing that they're going to be at the level that yeah. that is worthy of making, putting the time and effort into making a record. Yeah, but in plenty haven't made the list. Yeah, we've worked on a lot of ideas that didn't There's, come through. Yeah, <laughs> and these guys are great. I Matt don't... Zimmerman shoots them down all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, no. a spe- that's a specialization no. of shooting things down. Yeah. Like, no, that sucks. We're going to be like, this sucks, sucks. and we'll move on. Next, so, next yeah. option, please. Yeah. 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 Matt and a movie called The Nomad. <laughs> yeah. uh, so lastly, you guys are, are kind of famous at your live shows for, for doing these crazy mashups. <laughs> and I know you guys were... Kind of trying to top the last one that you did. Yeah. What kind of ideas are you coming up with? Yeah, sorry, we can't tell you. No, 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 no. <laughs> top, top secret. No, that's part of some really good ideas. We have a bunch. Really yeah, we have a bunch of ideas floating around, and and I think there's a couple shows coming up either this summer or when we're out on the road, we're going to record shows, and I think the thought is, at some point, we'd like to do a live CD or disc that has those mashups on it, but never like going and recording fully. It's not the same. Yeah. Performing them live and killing them live is is where that where the energy comes from. And there there will be different stuff this summer. Uh, maybe a couple. Don't know. We'll are, are, aren't we going to debut a new one? This. Uh, I believe. Well, I, I, we're going to figure that out tonight. We're going to be able to debut. <laughs> them. You got to come to the gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Blues. For yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. But we if will. practice goes well, yes. Do you yeah. 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 We are yeah. gonna, we are doing a new cover. Ryan's, a, t- Ryan's, Ryan's a tyrant, so we'll, yeah, I like to get we'll to that. The, yeah, the song like selection is going to run through 14, 15 times. You look, like, you look like Usher right now on the voice. Oh yeah, with the leg up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do I hate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. hate that. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry bud. Just stretching. Did you just nobody off Usher? Man. Yeah. Come on, dude. Totally piss off Usher when you watch this. His his moves. Even his peers make fun of him. That's true. All right. Well, I'll, I'll try to keep Usher off the email list. <laughs> I think he's in my auto like cool dudes list. But yeah. don't Usher, text him. Jay Z. Yeah. yeah, it's Jay Z, Usher, uh, whoever that guy was on TV earlier that we couldn't. Paul notes. Paul notes. Paul notes. I think I think it was like Lil Wayne or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. But uh, thanks for having us over, guys. Yeah, for uh, sure. Thank you. Really appreciate everything that you've done. And, and, yeah, yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah for well, sure, man. Right back at you, guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you guys June first. Yes, right, sounds good. Nice. Peace. Peace.